bed probe mounting going awry, resin printers that are having some tough times, and a challenge that I was not prepared for. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 96. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to channel and if you're new here and you're struggling with your 3D prints, remember you can reach out to us. We'll link to everything in that description down below and you can just email us directly youtube at 3dmusketeers.com and we'll do what we can to help you out. It's what we like to do here, 96 episodes deep of doing this weekly. We have some awesome failures for you and one of them that absolutely came out of nowhere for me. It's what I love about being challenged in this industry as I start to open up new realms of learning softwares like Clipper Fluid and Mainsail. Stick around, I think you guys are going to enjoy it. But real quick, if you are looking to support the channel, Patreon, YouTube channel members, and PayPal are options. At the $5 tier and higher, you get to be in those credits. At the $10 tier and higher, you get to come hang out with us in our private Discord server. And of course, we have tiers starting as low as $1 on Patreon, should that be your jam instead. Let's get into fixing some of these fails. Why is my BL touch so far above my extruder? We've got an Ender 3 V2 here that they've decided to add a BL touch bed leveling probe. This keeps you from needing to level the bed yourself, which is great because it can be a bit challenging, especially for more affordable machines like the Enders from Creality. They tend not to have the flattest build plates. Now, thankfully, Creality has started including some glass plates, one side being smooth glass, the other side being that carborundum material, which is silicon carbide. Don't scrape your nozzles across it. It destroys your nozzles. But to remove all those wheels and basically get auto bed leveling, you would install something like a BL Touch. If you're still doing the wheel game, we actually covered a little bit of that in a video. We'll card to it so you guys can take a look all about bed leveling and what it takes to actually make all of that happen. But if you notice, even when the probe is fully extended here, the probe is not closer to the build plate than the nozzle itself. That's a big issue because that means your nozzle is going to contact your build plate before the probe could even have a chance to trigger. I've installed these probes before and I would hedge a bet that it's installed upside down. We can see the manual and the mount. Yeah, it's upside down. The big thing to do here, and this assumes that you have the right mount, is make sure that you flip the entire thing over. The probe is not close enough, and if that's the case, you could look at trying to print shims, but overall the mount's just upside down. It's a pretty easy fix to do, just take it out, flip it, put it back on. It doesn't take but a few minutes and will solve those problems. You will need to look at making sure that you set the probe offset because the probe has some distance away from the nozzle itself. If the printer isn't aware of where the probe is in relation to the nozzle, it might try to probe areas that are outside of the probable area of the bed. You have your build plate that ends right here. You have your printer nozzle here, and then you have your touch probe. If it tries to probe right here, that touch probe is not gonna touch anything. You're gonna have an issue. So the printer actually has to jog over to then find that touch probe. I know, really, really helpful animations. I can't animate, so this is what you guys get. But it's a really easy solution and can be a five minute fix to a multi-hour problem. Pillowing even with five top and bottom layers. Printer seems not too bad balanced. Using five top and bottom layers, printing at 40 millimeters a second. What could it be? PLA 200C. We are over extruding. This is a common thing. And if we zoom in, we'll see that we are absolutely over extruding. If your ruffles have ridges and these ruffles have some ridges, you are over extruding. It's a pretty easy thing to solve. And we can see it's really evident here. While we do have some pillowing as well, it shouldn't be this bad, but we can see that it just, everything looks bigger than it should be. That is a common issue when you're over extruding. And the top commenter, got it right. A great thing that you can do here is run a steps per millimeter calibration. For us, we like to extrude 100 millimeters of filament and see, did it actually push 100 millimeters of filament through the extruder? If it didn't and you're high or low, there are calculators online where then you can utilize those numbers, try it again, put the new number in, save it, and then see if it works. And after a try or two, you should get it pretty darn close to being perfect. It's an easy thing to mess up, especially when you're either dealing with a printer that you've just repaired, maybe something that you've upgraded, or a printer that might actually be slowly failing itself. Now, over extrusion isn't a common issue for a printer that is failing. It is much more common that we see it in printers that 
are not calibrated properly. Under extrusion is way more popular when things like the extruder arm, the actual idler arm that applies pressure to the filament and the gear drive on the motor, that can snap if it's made out of plastic. And that we would then start to see issues with under extrusion. In this case, it's over extrusion, which means we're pushing more plastic than we are expecting. It's a pretty easy thing to solve. Steps per millimeter calibration, we'll get that done. Now, some might say, well, why don't you just adjust your extrusion multiplier, which while yes, could also solve the problem, we are putting a band-aid with extrusion multiplier where steps per millimeter is the actual root cause of it. Now we should be looking back into the history of the machine, what was done to it, and what might have changed that caused these problems. It's not exactly something that you should be immediately worried about, but it can happen. So keep an eye out for it when you do upgrades, especially if you're going to a different style of extruder that might have a different diameter of gears on the actual drive motor itself. I really like failures that completely confuse me in ways that make me think outside of the box. And this one from Discord member Peter S absolutely embodies that perfectly. And remember, if you do want to support the channel and the efforts that we do here, you can do so by utilizing those links in that description down below. If you want to join our Discord server, the $10 tier or higher gets you access to those awesome features where you can get help from myself and the rest of the crew here at 3D Musketeers. We love helping people. It's part of what we do. This is a clipperized SV06 Plus that is making parts like this. And my level of understanding with Clipper starts and stops at it's, it's a program. I have never used Clipper and we're going to be doing a series on this coming up that will probably be live streams. Although with how hot it's been here, not exactly certain if that's going to happen. But stay tuned. It is coming one idiot's journey through Clipper. Looking at this print, something just ain't right. I said, first off, your cooling is not adequate. And that is true because you can tell up here on the supports themselves, they're not properly supported. He needs more cooling. He's running 220C on the nozzle, 60 on the bed, utilizing Orca Slicer, a slicer that we'll be taking a look at next week. So get subscribed and stay tuned if that's your kind of thing. I'm excited to look at it because a lot of people say it is really the slicer that a lot of us have been waiting for. And because the SV06 Plus does have a volcano style nozzle and heat block, you can run higher flow rates up near 30 or even 35, which, well, yeah, means you can print faster. But if you're not getting your filament adequate heat, it's going to end up curdling like this. Boy, was I wrong though. We can see with some more photos, it doesn't necessarily get better. And these are some of the settings that we're looking at. This is great. I love having this kind of information because this really helps. With the settings that I had him adjust, it was in fact no better. I would say that is as close to the original image as functionally possible. So I had to ask our Discord. I had a feeling this has something to do with Clipper where I'm just not really a user, let alone an expert on it. And one of our Discord members, Mr. Chris Catlett, went through and found that he had set a pressure advance or that pressure advance was added in the config that he has. It was absolutely the problem. After removing that line for pressure advance, the part looks beautiful. There are no issues with it at all. And in fact, that's a really good looking part. So when you go from backside looking like that, backside looking like that, that's a big deal. Pressure advance and linear advance are all about dealing with back pressure in the system. And it's not often something that you see in machines that are direct drive. And the Solval SV06 and the SV06 Plus both are. In this particular case, it was set for some reason. And depending on the number, it will either stop extrusion before the line finishes or even retract the filament to deal with the back pressure issue that has occurred during the print. It was not something that occurred to me. I had started looking at line width overlap and that kind of thing. Pressure advance had never come to mind because it should be set to zero. And whether it was in the config or Peter was messing around with that setting, I don't know, but it was one that came out of nowhere for me. So this is apparently what happens when you don't have your pressure advance set correctly. Good to know. I've worked on pressure advance on a few of our printers, including some with Bowden tubes that are long, like a meter long. It can be a little bit finicky to get right, but on direct drive printers, you shouldn't need it. And if you do, it should be very, very, very small numbers. 0.5 is a huge number. And as we can see, 
it was causing some problems. It's kind of interesting to see how one little setting can cause this many issues. And I guess the nice thing about Clipper is you just comment it out, run the print again, and Bob's your auntie came out great. That's what I love about this whole series. It has kind of challenged me sometimes to think outside the box and dealing with this issue has showed me that I am really deficient in some of these programs like Clipper, Mainsail, and some of the others that honestly kind of scare me, but it's part of the deal when you get into these high speed printers that you kind of need to know how this stuff works. So join me as I do something that could be really difficult for me, but I feel like I might not be alone. When it requires extra stuff and it requires me to use code, it requires SSHing into a pie from time to time, it can be a little scary. But I'm excited that we have people that are learning this journey themselves and one, are willing to help me, but two, are able to help others. So good job, everybody. I'm glad this one worked out. We've got an Elegoo Saturn here. This was submitted by Mr. Devoid Colossus, who uh, found this picture out in the wild. This is what happens when you do not tighten the leveling screws on your Elegoo Saturn printers. We can see that there are two of those screws. There's one here and one here. If you don't tighten them enough, as the printer starts to print, the build plate itself will start to shift. This is because there is an immense amount of force being exerted when you are peeling that part off of the FEP. It's why you see professional grade machines use big tanks of resin and print down, or these prosumer grade machines that either have a wiper that goes across to pop the part off of the FEP, or in the case of like the Prusa SL1S Speed, actually dips the tank down to help remove the part from the actual FEP or NFEP or whatever the heck they're using these days. I have had this problem happen a couple of times. Back when Elegoo used the old grub screws rather than these larger socket cap screws, and there is no solving it with those grub screws. The build plate is effectively useless. In this case, hopefully it didn't damage anything, and if it didn't, you gotta re-level the printer, make sure to really tighten those screws down, and then send it again and see what happens. On the bright side, with the slightly curved build plate like this, it shouldn't harbor a lot of extra resin, so eh, the cleanup should be relatively easy on this. So, you know, bonus points there. But I've actually had this problem, and it creates some really interesting failures. In mine, my build plate started twisting. It, it didn't bend like this. It just started twisting in the ball and socket joint, so the parts look a little bit twisted. It's kind of cool, but it does suck when you're relying on it for a project, and then it just fails on you. So this is hopefully just a loss of resin and time, which ultimately for resin printers, they can run reasonably well unattended. So you don't have that issue. But remember when you take this part off that resin is toxic and you wanna make sure that you are staying safe. Oh yeah, lab coats coming soon. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Submitted by Omaha 3D Prints, we've got an interesting resin failure where we just have a big piece of cured resin stuck to the part. This can be from a couple of different things. One, it can be from a corrupt file. And normally that's the first thing I look at. When you load your part into Lychee Slicer, does it have any issues? Is it red? Do you need to repair the model? If it is not red when you load it into Lychee Slicer, we've got a different issue. And in this particular case, it wasn't red. We've got a screen here with a nice big crack, tear, I don't know. Screen's broken and there's really no way to fix it. You just need to replace the screen. This is not a challenge that I've done yet, but hilariously, I did find that resin printer with the broken screen the other day. I actually think I mentioned this when we did our FEP changing video that I thought the printer that I had brought out there was one with a broken screen. It was not. I found the printer with the broken screen. It's the printer that we had our clear resin in and it tells you how long that I haven't printed clear resin in because I haven't printed it since that video. Well found it when the parts that we printed had a bunch of holes in them, similar to what Omaha is dealing with here. There is no solving this. And for 
a sliver this thin, you might be able to peel it off and clean it and sand the model. Honestly, just replace the screen, reprint the parts, and life will be good. It's the thing with these resin printers. They've gotten so cheap. Like a decent resin printer is sub 500 bucks, and that's for a medium size, like a Elegoo Saturn or a Photon Mono X, whatever the new Photon Mono X is, or I think it's the M5S now that Anycubic is doing. I would love to take a look at that printer. That thing looks really cool. But you can't really do anything to stop this from happening. And at a sub $500 price point, especially if you're printing this for a business, it doesn't often make sense to replace the screen. It makes sense to just replace the printer because the cost of the parts and the cost of the labor doesn't make sense from a business case. You might have a staff member that can help you out with it or do it for you. Even then though, their time is probably better value doing something else. I do hate when stuff like this happens because there's never really a good answer. There's no fixing this other than, you know, hey, be a little more careful next time. Hey, don't drop your bill plate in your vat. That's how mine broke. But those kind of accidents will happen. I'm not necessarily sure how we can solve that issue from the beginning, but I think any cubic might be solving it with the M5S where it just auto levels itself and you don't have to worry about anything from there, which to me is objectively pretty damn cool. It should result in a better process where currently it can be a little bit jank. But yeah, resin is toxic. We gotta say it. But let me know what you all think about these fails and my fixes for them in those comments below. I love challenges, so don't be afraid to send us your fails. You can email them to us, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. That's all I got for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Go sit down in your bed, please. Thank you. Are we really gonna go right for that? You're a lady. Hey, you're a lady. We don't do that on stream unless we're getting paid. I guess I gotta wait a couple of minutes the cat can lick her Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And a massive thank goes out to all of our channel supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. You can join via PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube channel members if that's your kind of thing. And if you want to do that, links are in that description down below. But hey, like and subscribe goes a long way. It doesn't cost you a dime to help us out either. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series where you can see 95 previous episodes. This is 96. We're getting close to triple digits. I am really excited. And right next to that will be my six month review of Bamboo. I was right and I'm not proud of it. I'll see you guys down in those comments and the next one. Take care.